Okay, we are recording. So happy Wednesday, everybody. Um, welcome to the Team Health Patriot Nation team call. Uh, I'm filling in for Jessica while she's traveling, and I apologize. I feel like my kids are being really loud in the background. I don't know if you guys can hear them or not. Hello, but... it's not that bad. <laughs> Good, okay. <laughs> um, so it's been a crazy ride with school moms who are juggling distance learning and homeschooling. And I personally have had a lot of anxiety about distance learning, um, partly because of my experience homeschooling before. Um, it was homeschooling is definitely not ideal for my family, but it's not because of my business. And I think, I feel like there's a fear out there. And even for a little while, I was struggling with this fear too. I was sharing it with Felisa that I had this fear that I was going to not be able to keep up my business, that I was going to neglect my customers and my clients and that everything that I've built over the last three years would just kind of crumble because I was having to do this stuff and I'm having to do distance learning. But I remembered yesterday um, that I have done this before and that my business actually thrived. The more I was thinking about this last night, um, we went to my school's like back to school parent meeting um, where they went over the schedule and how everything's going to work. And the more I thought about it, the more I remembered that when I grew my business to diamond and when I really built the bulk of my business was actually when I was homeschooling. And so I'm going to share with you guys the tips and tricks that I used to get it done. Um, even though I was juggling homeschooling a kindergartner and a first grader. We did, we did kindergarten through half of first grade and a preschooler with William running around and wreaking havoc everywhere. Um, so with you guys, my top tips. And my first one is I had to be really intentional with my time. And I will actually say that this is why my business thrived during homeschooling and why when my kids were in school, I actually realized yesterday that I have gotten lazy. <laughs> I have had more time to overthink things to make things take longer than they needed to. And so last night, as I was mapping things out, there was a switch in my brain where I realized having to be really intentional and efficient with my time really actually benefited me and my business. So I'm going to share with you. This is I posted in our Team Health Patriots page um, my weekly schedule worksheet. It's a time blocking worksheet um, and it's what I used and have used for a really long time. And I went ahead and filled it out last night for myself and for my family. Um, so I'm gonna put that up as, a, as an example. You'll see it's, my handwriting's not that great, but this is the way that I like to do it. I like to use color. I like to color code things. But this is basically what I came up with last night for how this is gonna work for my family. And it's going to look different for every family. But what I wanna do is show you guys some key elements to how I put this together and to give you guys some ideas on how you can, you've been signed out. Can you guys still see and hear me? Yeah, I can see you. Okay. I just got a thing that says you've been signed out because your account is signed in from another device. Okay. Hopefully this still works. Um, so weird. Probably All right. Jessica out from somewhere else. Maybe, maybe. Um, okay. So where was I at? Okay. So key elements. So this is kind of what it's going to look like so far. And there will be adjustments and reference to this. I fill it out, not every single week, but every couple weeks, but this is basically what our week is going to look like. And the most important thing, like I was saying, is to be really intentional with our time and especially with family time, because when you're home, you're working from home, struggling school, it can feel like you're working all day long 
and not accomplishing very much. And so one of the reasons I love this time blocking is because it shows me that I'm not working all day long. It also helps me carve out focused family time. So if you look on here, everything that's green is essentially focused family time. So we have a morning walk with the kids or playing outside. And then we have our lunch. Those are going to be some really great built in one-on-one -on -one time with my kids, which if you can make that happen, I highly recommend trying to spend a little pocket of one-on-one -on -one time, a couple a day um, with each of your kids, if possible, because it just makes everything flow so much better if they're getting that um, attention. So we, then we have, how many hours is this? Like two whole hours of just dinner and family time. We've got Friday fun time in the afternoons on the Fridays grocery shopping and family time on the weekends and family time on Sunday as well. So there is a ton of family time built in here and it's blocked out. And I would highly encourage you when you're blocking out your family time, put your phone down unless you're going to up to like snap a picture later, but don't be in your messages. Don't be um, responding to things. Just set it aside and focus on your families. You have younger kids. Um, that's going to make a big difference. But basically when I put this together, I'm making sure I have family time. I'm making sure I have me time. So everything in pinkish red here is essentially for my mental health. So waking up, doing my quiet time, getting my workout in, uh, my wind down time at the end of the day, time on the weekends to do things I enjoy, like going to the farmer's market or church or whatever, like I might switch things out, but that's a pocket of time where I do something that I enjoy. And so time for yourself is also really important for your mental health and just overall joy of um, life and business and getting through this season. So then from there, then I'm blocking out my school time. Um, and really I start with this, I start this with when school starts. That's the first thing I put on there. When does school start? If you're homeschooling, you're going to have some flexibility in there, but it's probably a good idea. It always was for us to have a target time where we're planning to start school. That doesn't mean it'll happen exactly at that time. You have that more flexibility in regular homeschooling. Um, so that's totally fine, but knowing what time school starts. And then working backwards from there to make sure that you're getting your self-care time in, that you're getting some things done that you need to do um, so that you can show up as your most energized, best self, so that you're not starting your day frustrated and already feeling behind. So getting up early for me, getting up, doing my quiet time, drinking my energized, getting my workout in, and then checking in with my challenge group, getting those things done in before I started our school day before we started breakfast with the kids made a massive difference. And it's something I've really been slacking on lately that Felisa and I were just talking about yesterday. <laughs> but it's, a, it's my favorite way to start the day. So figure out what your morning needs to look like for you to be able to start energized, feeling good, feeling accomplished. Maybe you want to do your PD in the morning. Um, you know, maybe you want to try to get in a quick power half hour in the morning, whatever it is that you need to do. And you're going to want to tweak that. You're going to tweak it as you go, but just having a plan in place, having a time block is going to help a lot. So then from there, we're going to flow into breakfast. We're going to spend some time together as a family. Then we're going to start school. And even when I was homeschooling my kindergartner, there were times during the day where I was working on something like a worksheet or something, and I would be able to take five minutes and do something. So it, kindergarten is very hands-on obviously, but even then I was able to get in a power pocket and power pockets. Can you say hi? Hi. <laughs> All right. Go on and eat your breakfast. Hey, I, I know that kindergartner. Yeah, you were the kindergartner. Go. I knew this was going to happen. Hey. They hear me talking about them and they have to show up. Um, so,
power pockets are the way that I worked my business when I was working um, and when I was homeschooling. And so if you're not familiar with power pockets, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you start looking into that. So go to the Beachbody Champions page and search in that page, power pockets. There are multiple videos about how to do power pockets, how to divide your day up into um, little pockets of work. But essentially what you're doing is you're taking, you know, your success club tracker. Oh wait, you guys can't see me because I'm No, sharing. we can see you. Okay. So you're taking your success club tracker and I would suggest writing on the margins here which one is your power pocket. So work out, working out and drinking, I'm gonna stop sharing. So working out and drinking Shakeology, that's happening before, for me before my day really even starts. So that's done. But my first power pocket might be this piece right here, initiating connections and adding followers or even just adding followers. And then maybe power pocket number two is initiating connections and engaging with people and building relationships and setting those little chunks, breaking it up into power pockets. Um, I have like seven power pockets, I think that I, that I've identified. Um, and so breaking it up into little pockets like that using the sloth app to help yourself stay focused. So this is the, let me see if you can see this here. This is the sloth app. So you can start a, um, event like a pocket and you can play it. You can set a timer. Um, you can pause it if you get interrupted and you've got to go help your kids, but doing that is going to help keep me moving and keep me moving on the next thing. So after I expand my network, then I'm going to build new connections. And then if I get through my day, I'll go back to sharing here. Actually, let me hop back to this. So basically, the kids day for me for distance learning is broken up into these blue sections that you see here, but your kids day might be different. So during this first pocket of time, the first chunk of my kids school day, I'm going to try and get power pockets one and two done. That's essentially 20 minutes of work in what's like an 15 minute period, I think. So I can't, it's too small for me to see. Um, so I feel confident that no matter how many interruptions I have, I can most likely get through those two power pockets while my kids are doing their work. And then during the next chunk, I'm gonna try and get power pockets three, four, and five done, and so on. So basically just working through my pockets as I know that I'm gonna get interrupted, as I know that my kids are gonna need help with things, that's okay, there's plenty of buffer time built in there. So build in that buffer time, but also know what you're working on as you're going through the pockets of your day. So our school day ends around two, it's different. William's done at 2.15, Lizzie's done at three. We're gonna have some snack. And at that point, that's where I can have, my kids are so loud. That's where I can have some time to A, catch up on any of the power pockets if I didn't get to any of them or I can use that time to watch the national wake up call, to watch recordings of calls or trainings that I wanted to see, um, to send out emails to my team, to work on you know, a resource for my team. This focus time is kind of my catch all for all of the other, um, not, what, what's it called? Non-income producing activities. So that's what this time is here. Having that time in there really helps take the pressure off during the day when I'm trying to homeschool my kids and juggle my business activities too. Because if something comes up for some reason, I can use my business focus time to catch up on that. Now during business focus time, I am either, oh my gosh, I'm sorry that my kids are so loud. Like they're not normally this loud. Felisa knows that, but they are something special today. <laughs> I think it's bothering you more than it is us. Oh, that's good. <laughs> um, so where was I going with this? Oh, so focus time. Figuring out how to find a little bit of focus time is sometimes the biggest struggle um, for me. That's when I'm gonna let my kids watch TV or play video games or you know do their fun screen time um, or just have free play. 
And so that gives me a little bit of time to focus. I may also, things that I've done in the past is got a sitter to watch my kids during these pockets of time, even if it's only two or three days a week, it really helps. Um, leaving the house, if my husband is here to help watch the kids, makes a huge difference. Um, so finding like a, right now the air is terrible and everything's closed, but finding a coffee shop or a patio um, to work on, maybe going to a friend's house, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if you have family support nearby, this is where I would call on that family support and say, hey, mom, hey, sister, whoever, can you come over a couple of times a week and like watch the kids so I can have a little bit of time to focus. So that business focus time is where you might have to get a little bit creative, but finding it is definitely worth it. This is ridiculous, you guys. Um, so what you gonna add power pockets um i talked about that talked about time blocking and adding buffer times okay um so the second second i don't know what number we're on another thing that really helped me is meal prepping breakfasts and lunches you i didn't have time i won't have time to be getting everything out making breakfast and lunch for everyone and putting everything away and cleaning up. And it leads to kind of a messier life. Like the kitchen is a mess then three times a day. And I feel like I need to clean the, cat, the kitchen three times a day, which starts to drive me crazy after a little while. So meal prepping breakfasts and lunches so that you don't have to pull something together. Um, even as simple as putting together mason jar salads. I used to take those to work when I was working, but they are just as awesome when you're home because then you don't have to get, if you're using the container system, you don't have to get your containers out and get them dirty every single day. You just measure everything out, put it in the jar and there's your lunch and you can grab it and go. So those, that's why I've got this meal prep time here on Sunday afternoons. Um, I won't meal prep dinners because we usually cook a couple of times a week, uh, but meal prepping breakfast and lunches was critical for me. And also some snacks like chopping veggies for snacks. Um, what else? Fill your, we talked about filling your cup first, um, hiring a cleaner or a sitter. Oh, so one thing, childcare is closed. Schools are closed, obviously. Um, I actually, instead of being able to send my kids away, I decided to get creative about how I'm getting help. And the one thing that you can still do is hire a cleaner. House cleaners are considered essential. So I hired a cleaner to help out with some things to help take some of that load off. Even though it's not my ideal um, solution, it helps. So getting creative about what you can take off your plate is going to be really helpful. Um, and basically that's it, you guys. So it's every day. This, the beauty of doing it this way is it's every day and not all day. And when I was in my day like this, I was more consistent with the small daily activities that help grow your business, like adding your followers and people and inviting. And so it's almost looking back now when I had more time, I was much less efficient. I overthought everything and I was actually less effective. So in some ways I'm really excited. I know it's not going to be easy having just my kids, having my kids playing together all the time is not good for my family. So it's definitely not ideal, but it's actually, I think going to be really beneficial for my business. And I think it can be of our businesses. So hopefully those are some tips that are helpful. Power pockets and time blocking are everything. You guys have any questions? Like, is there anything that you're struggling with? Cause I know a lot of you guys have already started homeschooling or distance learning. I'm going to stop sharing. Um, is there anything that you're struggling with that you want to brainstorm together? How are you guys doing? Not really, but I did want to ask what kind of things do you prep for your kids for lunches? <laughs> okay, my kids are the pickiest humans in the entire universe. Um, 
And basically the only thing that they will both eat is peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. So my kids have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches almost every single day. Um, so I don't prep the sandwiches. What I do prep is I will wash and chop veggies and um, fruit and do the whole thing. Like if I buy a thing of grapes, I wash the whole thing of grapes all at once. I don't like wash it every single time I serve it. That's ridiculous. <laughs> um, and so I will do peanut butter and jelly and a veggie and a fruit and that's their lunch. So I keep it really simple for them. Um, sometimes we will do dino buddies and just throw them in the oven if I'm feeling like they need a little bit more protein. Um, but it's very simple. I think that's nice. key actually. Yeah, keeping it and simple. I and I think most kids don't really, my kids are the same just so you know. Um, and I think most kids, when I, even when they went to school and we were doing lunches because they didn't want to eat the cafeteria food, it was pretty much peanut butter and jelly every day because they didn't want anything else. Like it was like, if I tried anything else, like I tried to be creative and I tried to be that Pinterest mom and I tried to send them these like, you know, turkey and this whatever. And they're like, I don't want it. It would always come back and it was a waste of food. Yeah. So I just started realizing that, you know, yes, you want to get, you know, your kids to eat a certain way. But I also think to some degree, as a mom, you have to realize that you're being the example by eating healthy, trying to get them to eat what they will eat that's healthy. And then moving on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just fighting the right battles. So. And I encourage my kids to try new things and to try like, especially at dinner time, dinner time is where I really focus on trying to introduce like new foods or expand their palate. And, and I just make them try the thing at least. Uh, but lunches, I'm just all about food that they will eat and move on. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. <laughs> yeah. We, we called it, we, we haven't really had to worry about it too much lately, but we used to call it when they were younger because my kids are older than you guys is them. But when they were younger, I called it a no thank you bite. Yes. That they were not allowed to say they did not like something until they had a no thank you bite. They were not allowed to get anything else. Like, you know, if they had something on their plate they really liked and they'd eat it all and want more, I'm like, well, that's still sitting on your plate, right? Like, you don't yeah. get to. My daughter was famous for it. It didn't matter what it was, she said she didn't like it. It, she, it could have been something she ate last week, and now all of a sudden she doesn't like it. And I was like, okay, I need to see you take a bite of that first and then tell me you don't like it. And I'd always psych her up. I go, oh, I know you're gonna like it. Okay. And then, and then I realized that everything I liked, she likes. So I'd be like, mommy loves it. And then she would start eating it. It's ridiculous. But, That's awesome. My daughter is the same. She's very picky with her food. I think it's a, I think it's a female thing. <laughs> I think so too. Mine are both super picky. Better. 11. I'm telling you, 11 years old is when it changed. So that's positive. Oh, nice. I was, list, I was listening, Sarah. I was just trying to get ready for work. So um, I was just going to add to the fact I, I'm still working um, outside of the business. So I have to be intentional with my time. And on the days that I am not, I don't get anything achieved, um, which is like the last two weeks, right? Because distance learning has started. I feel like yeah. I'm just a mess all the time right now. Um, but my most successful month was May and that was the craziest, like COVID-19 in the hospital. I went back to acute care. I was working the weekends. So I was most successful when I was most busy, which is kind of crazy. So I can see why you have to have a mapped out schedule. Otherwise home business is hard. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And sometimes the busier, busier you are, it forces you to be intentional. And so I think in that respect, this is going to be really good for me. <laughs> All right. Any other questions, you guys? I would love to see if you, if you fill this out, I would love to like, have you post like a picture or something just so that we can all share ideas for how we're getting through our day. Uh, one other thing that I just realized that I kind of forgot to mention was um, blocking in time for like chores or cleaning the house. Like that's kind of important to me because I'm okay with some mess, but when my house reaches a certain point, 
it starts to affect, I feel more anxious. Like I just feel there's so much more stress that comes along with it. So I do block in a little bit of time, a couple of times a week to like clean the house and do things like that beyond what I get help from with the house cleaner. So that was another thing that I thought about. Can you, um, can you, um, post like a picture of yours done in the health coach page? And then what we can do is then we can have people who decide to do it, post theirs, um, in the the comments. Yeah, that's a good idea. Post mine and I will put, um, I'll make sure to direct everybody to the files where the, um, PDF yesterday, last night. So, and can, and put in the, in the, um, post, can you also put a mention about the sloth app? Cause some people might not Yes. go back and I watch w- this. And I feel like that. I, I feel like when I found that app and it's funny because I don't even really have to use it right now because mm-hmm. you and I are doing our own power hours together and everything. But I feel like when I don't have someone to do a power hour with me, and even though I don't feel like I necessarily need pockets, power pockets, I still feel like that app helps so much because I feel like if I did, if I'm sitting down for an intentional power hour and my kids come over and they interrupt me for something, I can pause it and then I can address them and not feel so frustrated Mm-hmm. and deal with whatever it is they got to do and then go back to it and start it again and know that I'm still getting that intentional amount of time for that topic. Yeah. So I thought it was super important for even people who don't need necessarily power pockets all the time. Yeah. And it helps, it helps me remember where I'm at. So like if I get mm-hmm. interrupted, if it ends up being a long interruption, I don't have to like go back and go, okay, now where was I? I can just look yeah. at, agree. This is exactly where I was. And I used to use just a checklist for that. So if you don't, if you're not able to download the app or whatever, um, you can just have a daily checklist. So it ends up being basically our success club tracker <laughs> just with power pockets designated. Um, one other thing that I realized that, Oh, I will also put in there um, the idea of power pockets and direct everybody to the beach body champions page. I didn't realize that there were so many different trainings on how to do power but one thing that I'm going to do, so on Saturdays, I have an hour carved out for a power hour. I'm actually going to go through and do one of those power pocket power hour trainings. Um, that way, as I am creating my system, my power pocket system and the activities that I want to do and how I want to do them, I can kind of get some ideas from different people on how to do this. So that's one thing that I highly recommend going in maybe once a week carving out an hour to watch one of those and then figure out what your power pockets are going to look like, what you're going to implement for that week and try it out. What works, keep what doesn't work or doesn't fit or doesn't feel right for you, you know, find another way to do it, watch another training and see how it's going to work best for you. So I think that's all I got guys. Awesome. Awesome. So Um, did we, did I miss it's Salisha's birthday today. Did we already tell her happy birthday? Did I miss that no. at the beginning? No, no, I was waiting. Oh, okay. I was like, I might have missed it. I was late to the party. So. Oh, no. I'm such a jerk. No, no, you're not friend. a jerk. Salisha, <laughs> you're my only friend out of like 1,800 people that was born today. I Aww. saw nobody is born today. It's so weird. Well, That's happy birthday. Amazing. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> Are you doing anything exciting? Exciting? No. I know it's <laughs> hard. <right now. laughs> we went to my mom's last weekend, and we're gonna try to go camping this weekend. Though we'll see. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Well, happy birthday! I Thank would sing you. Too, you do not want me to do that. Me neither. Anybody else want to sing? <laughs> no, I'm really bad at it. <laughs> Awesome. Me on um, my shower for my ears only. <laughs> me and in my car. I sing in my car. Yeah. I sing in my yeah. living room, but not out in public. <laughs> not on Zoom. <laughs> not on Zoom. No. <laughs> not on a recorded Zoom call. That's exactly. Sure. For sure. There's evidence. <laughs> oh, awesome. Um, I also yeah. wanted to tell you all that I appreciate you. I don't think I say that enough, but each and every one of you are oh. appreciated. Thank you. I appreciate all of you guys too. And don't forget you guys, 
And most of you, I don't think all of you who are on here know, but if anybody's catching the recording, we have our raffle going on and we still have the MBF sale going on and our team cup coach promo codes are still um, active. So leverage those things as we're going into the last, last few days of whatever month this is, yeah. August. <laughs> and I think we're, 10 rounds, I think, is going to be, right, doing the two nutrition programs, too? Yes. Yeah. Challenge pack, so that's exciting. Yeah, really exciting. Gives you a couple of options for helping people get started. Yes. Okay. Right. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. You're welcome. Happy Wednesday, you guys. If you ever need to talk through or brainstorm anything, I'm always open for that. So have right. a great day. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.